Hey everyone, this is Nathan Williams with BlackRain79.com and I am back here with another hand history review for you guys. So today this hand was sent to me by Bob from Canada. It's a pretty interesting spot. We've got some ace-king and we get a lot of action on the flop. And we're sort of against a, a reg, I want to say. Um, the action, the player that specifically we're going to be involved in with this hand is Villain12. And what the, the read that Bob has given me, he's only got 12 hands on the guy, but he's playing 23% of his hands, which is, as you can see, this is a six max table. Um, that's pretty middle of the road. That's that's kind of like a tag player or I mean, it's not necessarily tight and aggressive, but it's just it's a normal amount of hands. Uh, Bob didn't give me any information on his uh, preflop raise or his uh, aggression factor or anything like that. But 23% of hands is, is pretty normal for six max. So I do want to differentiate this player from, in the last video, we talked about a complete unknown player. And when I when I say unknown, I mean somebody who we have absolutely no reads, anything at all. But uh, as I often say, you know, you only need about 10 or 20 hands to get a, a general idea of the player type. So even with 12% of, even with only 12 hands and knowing that this guy plays 23%, we can get a a reasonable idea that this guy is not a fish. We That's a lot of what you're doing with player types is you, you're just excluding possibilities. With 12 hands played and 23%, he's almost certainly not a fish. So we don't want to say he's tight, aggressive, tight passive or anything yet, but we can definitely say that he's probably a regular of some sort. So with that said, let's get into this hand. So um, Bob raises it up preflop there, pretty standard, of course. You can, at NL2, I've talked about this a million times in my on my blog and my books and everything, is you can go for a bigger sizing. And this goes for $1, $2 live as well. If there's some huge fish at the table, um, it, with the small amounts in this, I mean, here we're talking about pennies. Literally, they're just not going to, uh, you know, they're not going to care a difference between $0.06, cents, $0.08, cents, $0.10. Cents. So sometimes I will just go more with my big value hands like this, but... Um, at a table just full of unknowns uh, versus regulars. Now, of course, you shouldn't be playing at a table like that, but uh, there should always be a fish at your table. But I, you know, going six cents here three times the blind is completely fine as well um, in a spot like that. So uh, we get called uh, by Villain12 here. Once again, we've already been through the reads on that guy. He's kind of a reg, we'll just say. So super interesting flop here. Uh, it obviously smashes our range as the preflop raiser. Um, so it's a pretty standard spot to go ahead and make a C bet, which is what Bob does. Uh, at higher limits, you can definitely mix in some checks here to balance your range against uh, um, against some better players. But as I always talk about at NL2 and ha like stakes like this, just always keep everything as simple as possible. Um, I really don't like balancing my range too much against players at these stakes. Um, because it, you just end up leveling yourself and overthinking a lot. So, so I really like Bob's decision here to just go out and make the standard C bets and villain 12 calls. So we get a six of spades on the turn. It really doesn't change anything drastically. Um, there's no draws that got there or anything like that. I mean, um, so it's, it's pretty standard spot to just double barrel um, here. There can be a case made for uh, check calling or something like that. But once again, I, I think it's just kind of it's getting unnecessarily kind of fancy. Uh, um, I might take that line against like, it, like if I was against a really nitty player here who I know folds a lot on the flop, who's, you know, calls, has a tight range preflop and calls to see bets or, or sorry, folds to see bets a lot on the flop. Um, actually, this is a spot that I would consider slowing down and making a check call or, or even a, a check fold against the, some insanely nitty guys that you'll, you'll, find at these stakes like some guy who's only playing 10 percent of his hands or something because i mean honestly we don't beat a whole lot against a, a super premium range um but against uh, just a uh, again we we don't know a whole lot about this player uh, i think it's a pretty standard uh double barrel i'm i'm totally on board with bob's decision here so villain 12 goes ahead and makes the call and we come to the most interesting river of them all so <laughs> Um, I think the decision, I'll say right away that I think the decision here for Bob is super, super simple. Um, there's checking is, is really the only option here. And I hope you guys see the reason why that's the case here is, you know, if we bet out here, he really, there's almost no value hands that, that he can call with um, that are worse. I mean, it's, I mean, I guess there technically is, there's king, queen and stuff like that. But we put ourselves in a position where, 
when we we make a bet here, we remove his uh, complete ability to to bluff at the hands, and there's just it's such a nasty river. There's so many hands that beat us here. Any ten beats us. Any two diamonds. So. Um, I definitely just prefer a check call in this spot. We'll hopefully uh, get to showdown and, and just allow him to, to make a bluff sometime as well. I mean, when you bet out here, you completely take away his ability to make a bluff. So so Bob does check, and Villain decides to go all in, essentially. Now, this is definitely way different. Uh, overbet situations are are rare at the micros. I mean, they, they do happen, of course, and it does change the complexion of the hand completely. If he bets 40, 40 cents here is totally different than $1.60 here. So, and I hope you guys see the, the reasoning behind that as well. You know, I mean, we have to be right here a lot in order to call this bet. And that's why actually uh, overbetting is a very uh, good strategy, in, in my opinion, in some spots of the micros and Hopefully I can get in some hands in the future on that because uh, it's it's really interesting. But back to this hand here, um, I'm going to agree with Bob's decision to fold. Um, I don't think that we have too many options here. Once again, any 10 beats us, any two diamonds. We've got the toppest two pairs, <laughs> but uh, there's sets that beat us. Yeah, I mean, there's just there's so many things that, uh, that we can't beat at this point. And, you know... If Villain 12 is somehow bluffing in this spot, you know, it's a great bet. But I think he just shows up with a hand that, uh, that beats us too often here. What I what I will say about overbets at the micros, and let me know your guys' thoughts, your experience as well on this, but what I, I do see at the micros mostly is that when people overbet, it's very rarely a bluff. It actually is the nuts. Like, they don't balance much. It's, it's almost always the nuts. It's like a... He's got a 10 here or something like that. Or he's got two diamonds. So I think we definitely do have to fold in this spot. It sucks. Obviously, we've, you know, uh, we've put in a fair bit. And, you know, we've got, you know, a to uh, two pairs. But um, there's just not a whole lot we're beating on this board. So um, I, I do agree with Bob's decision. And sometimes in poker, it just, you know, you got to play these hands where uh, you just have to um, lay it down and uh, fight uh, fight another battle on another day. So let me know your guys' thoughts on this hand, uh, if you would have played it any different. I, uh, yeah, I agree with Bob's uh, decisions every step of the way throughout this hand. Let me know if you guys would have played it differently, though. Uh, make sure you th that you like and subscribe uh, to the channel if you want to see more hands like this. And lastly, make sure you check out my free ebook uh, below that gives you my complete strategy. The link's in the description. Massive profit of the micros. Give you my complete strategy on how to crush these stakes. So thanks a lot for watching guys. It's been Nathan Williams with BlackGrain79.com.